Hi, I'm Jose, Learning Consultant at Microsoft, and in this series, we're going to be looking at using 3D in education. 3D content is proven to increase understanding and comprehension of subjects. So I've come here to Microsoft's Paint 3D Studio to discover some of the fun and engaging ways you can introduce easy 3D creation in the classroom. There is a video for each of the STEAM topics, and in this episode, we're looking at science. I'm here today with Jen, the Creative Director of Paint 3D, and we're here to understand more about how 3D can be used in the classroom. Yeah, so Paint 3D is actually a really great tool for helping to teach science. Science is a subject that has quite a few complex ideas and things that people can find hard to visualise. So using 3D, we can allow people to help look around things a bit more and make it way more approachable. Are there any icebreaker activities that you could talk us through? Yeah, so here we have quite a quick and, and simple task to do. We have a cross-section of an animal cell here, and so we're just going to jump in and label this cross-section in a 3D space. If I just grab one of the sections here, uh, one of the labels, and click Make 3D, so this moves it into 3D space. Okay. From there, I then not only get to move where in X and Y that I think it sits, but I can move it in depth as well. So I'm just going to fill in the other ones here. Do you know what the answer to any of these are? Um, I could probably have a go at the nucleus. Okay. Have a thing. <laughs> I think that's the easiest one. Which one, one. do you think that is? Uh, so I think that's the centre one right, right here. Right, in the middle. And so with this model, um, is this something you created or is it something that's already out there for educators to be able to use? Um, so I didn't actually create this. We okay. have a brilliant online community called Remix 3D that basically is filled with loads of different models, some added by other contributors, some that we at Microsoft add, that is a great resource for finding all sorts of different 3D models for whatever your needs are. So now I've added all my labels, I can now choose to rotate it in 3D. So here I can orbit the model around and then I get a real understanding of how it comes together in real world space. Great, so what if I wanted to create a cross section for myself? Yes, I can show you exactly how to do that. We have a great example here of a volcano. So here I've got a 2D image, and we're gonna use that to make our 3D models. We're gonna use it as a guide. Now what's great is that we have a really easy tool to make 3D with. It's called 3D Doodle. And this is basically a way that I can do freehand drawing. So I just draw the 3D shape that I want, and then when I join it together, it pops it straight into a 3D object which is really cool. When I'm freehand drawing this other side and I want to draw a very straight line like here at the edge, I can just dot all the straight bits I want uh, and they automatically join together. So then I get a very straight edge when I finish the doodle. We have another version of this tool, which basically produces rounded 3D objects, okay. which will be great for our magma and our cloud. It's actually very satisfying to see something you draw in 2D suddenly pop out into 3D. You can see, obviously, for a cloud, this tool comes into its own. Already, I have got a basic cross-section of a volcano, which is the success criteria for, for this task, and it was fairly easy for me to reach that. Now, what's interesting is that this task, I can continue to build upon it the more and more I want to do, depending on the level of the student. And I think that's something that's really important is that dif differentiation in the lesson, setting a success criteria where students can start at a point they feel really comfortable with. Yeah. Yeah, so the next step I'm going to look at is actually what helps form the volcano. So let's draw the tectonic plates. So I'm going to use exactly the same tool I used before um, and just continue to draw around this uh, our 2D drawing of the, of the initial cross-section and continue to pop out uh, 3D objects. So if you see here, if I now turn the model on its side, I can begin stretching each of these objects out in 3D space. So it's giving the students a real understanding of depth. So another way students can demonstrate increased progress is through texturing. So here I'm going to move into our stickers tool and we have uh, a load of textures, custom textures, that we have within the app already. Here I'm going to choose the concrete, but it's going to work perfectly for my rock. I'm just going to lower the opacity a little bit here, and then use the clone tool here so that I can keep uh, adding more and more stickers and keep texturing as I go. You'll also notice that it cleverly only wraps around whichever 3D object I'm currently 
hovering my cursor on top of. But I don't just have to stick to the ones that are readily available in Paint. I can then choose to add any of my own stickers into the app. So this can really help bring our, our magma to life here. And that's a great way in itself to engage students just by adding those different textures and being able to see it in a visual way. Definitely. I mean, it really calls out what the different parts are, but also it just makes it look good and it gives you a bigger sense of accomplishment. And now I've finished texturing, I still want to add a little bit more detail into the object. So I can easily go and grab one of my brushes. So all of our brushes work on 3D as well as 2D. And I can take one of the colors from the texture like this, and now I'm going to use spray can. So I can begin to add a bit more detail uh, or highlight certain areas of the magma. Um, that I want to show are particularly volatile. So not only does this make it look cool, it's also, again, it's another way that the, the, the student can demonstrate knowledge of what's actually going on with the volcano. Is there a way that we can engage those students who are higher attaining um, to really stretch them? Yes, definitely. I mean, basically, with something like this, you can take it as, as far as you want, but certain things that I would suggest would be that you could start to fill in the back of the volcano, so okay. start to put in details there. And also, obviously, we could annotate this in the same way that we did in the first icebreaker. So we've created this 3D model. Is there anything else that we can do with it? Yes, well, because it's 3D, it unlocks a lot of new opportunities. So here, if I take it into PowerPoint, which now supports 3D as well, I can take the model in here and use it in my presentations. But because it's 3D, I can rotate it this way on this slide. So we're looking at the front of the volcano and then use the morph transition between the two slides. When I play it, as you see here, you begin off with the start of the volcano and then it swings round to show the cross section. And I think that visual element for all learners is fantastic because they're going to be able to see those different parts of the volcano and really begin to understand what it is they're learning about. Exactly, it gives context to the whole thing. Paint 3D comes installed with Windows 10. For more information on using Paint 3D in education, check out the Microsoft Educator community. You'll find downloadable resources, lesson plans, and engaging ways to use technology in the classroom. Let us know what you have found useful and what features you would like to see next in Paint 3D by leaving a comment below. And to watch the next video in the series, click here.